talking about game changer, being a game changer, right? Um, we were, were reading the book, the Fred book, the Fred Factor book, and I, I managed to finish that this week um, myself. And uh, again, just a very simple book as far as its presentation and its writing, but really trying to stir up our hearts to see that um, it's the little things, it's the daily things. It's taking what we might look as ordinary and boring or whatever else, and how can we transform that? And uh, I, you know, I'm trying to do that with the things that I do. Um, I'm, I'm constantly self-correcting myself in things I have to change. Um, Shiloh, my, our grandson, he, he was up here singing with us, right? He, um, he likes to talk to me. And he'll ask me all kinds of stuff about, it's one of, I always joke to him, it's like one of those little two-year-olds, why is the sky blue, why is the tree green? And I'm like, I don't know half the answer to those questions that you're asking me, but he just wants to talk to me, right? And I'm discovering I'm, I'm a very quiet, I'm actually a very quiet person, I'm an introvert, I am, believe it or not. And uh, lots of times when I'm driving, I'm, again, I'm in my car for hours on end, and I don't have no music playing, nothing. I'm just in there thinking, sometimes praying, Trying, and also trying to engage people that get into my car um, and trying to learn how to, to create, if that's, if that's possible, opportunities with people, right? And, uh, but you know, like anybody else, I'm, you know, I'm, I have my struggles with that, but I'm trying to take what's ordinary, just driving people around, and how can I make it extraordinary? How can I speak into people? How can I make it easy for them, you know? Uh, of course, I get some of the older people that will have uh, walkers or different things and trying to help them. Sometimes I pull up in my little blue car and I've got three suitcases and they're wondering how they're going to fit it all in there, but I make it happen. And, uh, so, but, and try to be pleasant and exciting and just, you know, engage in the conversation if that's what they want to do. Not all of them do. How can I make it extraordinary? That's what we're talking about. We're going to talk, talk today a little bit about how the element of faithfulness applies to that. Um, I mentioned on Thursday that it was my spiritual birthday. Thursday was my spiritual birthday, and that I have been a Christian for 42 years. I got saved when I was 19, just shy of my 20th birthday. And I have had the pleasure, if you will, the joy of, I've never really walked away from God during that time. Some people, you know, get saved, and then they have a down period, they're not walking with God, and they come back, that kind of thing. I'm not elevating myself above them. I'm saying I'm thankful that I haven't had those times. I'm not saying I haven't had my struggles, that I haven't had my battles, but I've, I've had where I've been able to keep moving forward. And that really is the essence of faithfulness. Now, for me, it's all about what God's doing. It's not about me, right? It's about God's faithfulness. And I, so I ask myself, when I, when I talk to people, they ask, how, how, you know, like I got my, my son up in the Bay, John, he, he, he's, he's kind of a little bit up and down sometimes. He's had a lot of hardships, there's a lot of drugs, a lot, I'm in prison, junk like that. And um, and so he struggles with a lot of stuff. And like a lot of single people, some of us when we were single, we're always thinking about finding that person, right? Aren't you so glad? Uh, <clears throat> but they live in that moment, so there's the struggles, right? So he's kind of like, man, Dad, you're so just on it, like I said. But it's not about me. The thing that I look at is that I've been able, by God's grace, to stay faithful and just keep pushing forward. Now, it's not that we haven't had, you know, struggles and tragedies. Some of you know that um, when my wife and I had, hadn't been married for very long, we had our first child, and she died when she was seven months old from leukemia, right? Of course, then we, we just recently lost Shiloh's dad, passed away just a few short years ago, and, and I was there when it happened. So, you know, you have these hardships that come along, even in ministry, having to move sometimes as God directs. And all the inner battles. But my thought is, even though all of those things are happening, and I can look down, God is still there. God is still doing great and powerful things. And so my, my thought today, my title today, if you will, I'm going to say it a few times if I can just make it say, do it, uh, say it correct English, is, and yet. Even though these things are happening in my life, and yet God is still there. God is still faithful. God is still working in my life. I'm so thankful. One of the things I'm really thankful, not just about the, the fact that he's been able to be faithful 
and, and keeping going forward is that he's kept my heart teachable. Can I tell you something? The, the, the biggest thing that you're going to want to strive for as you get older and you've been in church a while and you think that you've heard it all, blah, 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 is that you can still learn things. You still have things to learn, right? And you don't have all the answers because that's an easy trap for the enemy uh, to, to throw before us. So I got a lot of scriptures. I hope that I can get them all done. I got to go fast for you guys a little bit so I don't keep you here all day. I don't want to be like Pastor Bob making promises about how short my message is going to be, that sort of thing. I can't make no promises like that. I'm going to try because I'm really asking God to um, lead me. When, the, when the, the brothers were praying for me before, you know, just anoint him. This I go, God, I really need you to help me preach this message because I really don't know where it's going entirely yet in a sense because I feel like he's got something inside of it that he's going to try to bring out. Does that make sense? So let me just start getting into some of my verses, if you will. In Psalm 36, verse 5, it says this. And I'm reading mostly, in fact, I'm reading entirely out of the New Living Translation, for those of you that are trying to keep up with that. Your unfailing love, O Lord, is as vast as the heavens. Oh, that's beautiful, isn't it? You know, there are a couple of th main things that I'm striving for in my walk with God. The first is that I will truly love God. Sometimes I find myself being exceedingly hesitant about sharing with other people, engaging them about, you know, the good news and stuff, because I'm, I'm expecting a negative response or something like that. And if I really love God, <laughs> not to put any burden on anybody, I wouldn't have as much of that struggle. But the second part is really what feeds the first, which is that I really know that God loves me. Because sometimes it's a lot of mental stuff. I know God loves me. But I need to transfer that to here. Because when I know that, the Bible says, we love him because he first loved us. Sorry, that was one of the ones I came up with later that I didn't have up there for this honor. We love him because he first loved us. So the more I know that God loves me, the easier it is to be able to express my love towards him. Right? And just be free to love others. One of the things that was in the book was um, this idea that the most important thing is to love others. And not to be looking at always at what, you know, when people come in, I, I get a lot of people from different lifestyles in my car, as it might you might imagine. And uh, of all, I mean, of all kinds. All kinds. It's, it's quite uh, an experience to have all different kinds of people in the car. And sometimes I feel that religious spirit trying to creep over me about who they are and what they're about. And God, you know, something that, something that God's really been showing me lately here, so I'm getting off on track on some of these other things that God's trying to do. Everybody's life is important to them. I want you, I want you this week, if you could, aside from the, whatever I'm going to share here, you're walking, you're driving around, you might see somebody on an on, on on, on off-ramp with a sign or something. And you might have a certain way you feel about that or whatever. Or just different kinds of people, whatever they're doing. Understand their life is important to them. And also, here's a mind blower. It's also important to God. Now, he might not have the same objective for them as they have for themselves. But their life is important. He is not willing that anyone should perish, but that all would come to repentance. Now, that's the struggle people have. Not everybody wants to come to that point of repentance, right? But as I get to know God, I want to just love people. Yeah, sometimes I had, again, I'm sharing, I'm, I, sometimes I overshare, so forgive me here. I had three young ladies get in my car a Friday night. They were going to a concert up at the Greek Theater or something. I don't know what exactly called by the observatory in L.A. Oh, my gosh, the traffic event was horrible. So I had them in my car a long time. And I don't know why three young ladies would be talking about this, but they were talking about the merits of polygamous relationships. Now, I, told, I didn't really say I was a pastor. I just said, you know, I'm always blessed. And because, you know, when, you're, when, you, when you know the Lord, you're always blessed. I said that a little early on, but they got into this conversation. And, of course, me being myself, being kind of hesitant, I finally, because I was in the car a long time. Traffic was really not moving. <laughs> so I finally said something to the line. You know, to me... Polygamy is an excuse to satisfy a man's lust. That's what I said. Because it's true. It just is. Okay? 
And I didn't say that in a harsh way. I wasn't criticizing them. They were engaging in conversation. I was engaging them. And, and they said, yeah, you're kind of right. And, you know, they got into it you know, and then went off. You know, I didn't mean to stir that discussion back up again because that wasn't my intention. But I just kind of wanted to speak some truth a little bit. Because one of them was back there saying, I can see the, 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 the. And they're going on like, I'm like, you're crazy. You don't even understand what you're talking about. Right? So I, I want to just love on these people in the Lord and share. Right? And that's what we're talking about, faithfulness. Because as we push forward, God is faithful. Your faithfulness reaches, I'm getting back to the message here. But your faithfulness reaches beyond the clouds. We are our father's children, so we are also called to be faithful. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8 says this. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That speaks of faithfulness. He sticks with it. But I have an even stronger verse I want to touch on. And kind of my main verse, if you will. Although, I, again, I have lots of them. And I, I forgive me for giving you so many verses today. But Jesus did extraordinary things, right? Hebrews chapter 12. I'm in the latter part of verse 1. And reading through verse 2, it says, and this is, a, again, we've got to understand when God says things, he's really giving commands. He's saying things in the imperative, like this is what you need to do. This is not a suggestion. It'd be nice. Again, I always want to clarify that because sometimes we take that, oh, that'd be nice. No, God's saying this is what you need to do. He's kind of being passionate about it. Let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. How do we do this? We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus kind of talked about that during worship. The champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Yeah, we're on the next verse. Sorry, sis. I apologize. Actually, I, I had to break it in two parts. Because of the joy awaiting him, what's that? I wait, and you know what I think of the joy as? You and me. Because of the joy a restored relationship with us, of being engaged in life with us again, and we have that opportunity. Because of that joy awaiting him, he endured the cross disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. He endured the cross. So we see this word again a couple times, endure, endurance, right? And we think that's, well, that's really the terminology for faithfulness. It's about endurance. Huh? Yes, I know sometimes the first thought that comes to us when we see stuff like this is that I'm not Jesus. Of course Jesus would be able to do that. And yet... You have the same power of the Holy Spirit inside of you, empowering you to do great things in the name of Jesus. Come on. He has given you every spiritual gift that you might need to accomplish every single task that he leads you to perform. Ephesians 1.3. That's a verse. I'm not going to necessarily read them all, but I'm throwing them up there for you. It is no longer strictly you living your life, huh? but Jesus living your life. In you, Galatians 2.20. Oh, she's rocking it. There is no challenge you cannot overcome. There is no barrier you cannot break through. There is no height you cannot go over. God has equipped you and he's in you to do great things. We all stare sometimes too much, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly guilty of it, at the failures that we have done. We know our shortcomings, our weaknesses. There are so many things that we've attempted and fallen horribly short in. And yet, a little echo there. My God tells me, and he tells you, that you're, in your weakness, he is made strong. You know, God purposely puts you in situations where you have to rely upon his strength. He doesn't want you being able to figure it out on yourself because that's little. You're going to get... We're human. We can only go so far. But with God, and this is found in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, with God we can do great things because it's his power at work in us. He declares that you can do all things through Christ. Philippians 4, 13. Those things that God calls you to do, he will likewise, likewise empower you to accomplish and in victory. He's not spoken, only spoken his word over you, but he's also infused you with his Holy Spirit to live a truly great life. Great life. Yeah. More of you are getting on to that. I, I, I know it's kind of amusing, but really, that's what we're called to live, a great life. And again, not a great life for, like, you know, 
all over YouTube or whatever type of thing and have all the toys, but a life that mean, has meaning and purpose. And this is accomplished by faithfulness. Huh? And so this, what I'm doing so far is I'm trying to remind you of all the tools and all the promises that are over you that are going to enable you to accomplish these things and give you reason that you don't have to give up. Yeah, you know, it is difficult to make commitments, right? My wife and I were, were, were doing the cleaning the church thing. It's not the most fabulous, luxurious task, but we're going to be faithful to it. Because that's our commitment. Because sometimes it's difficult. When we, when we speak about being faithful, sometimes we, we look back at some obligations and responsibilities that we allowed ourselves to neglect and gave ourselves excuses of why it was okay to neglect them. And yet, we are called by our Father to step into the gap. We are called to share the good news with all those who need to hear it. Matthew 28, 19. And listen, God is able to do things in you beyond your imagination by his mighty power that's in, at work inside of you. Ephesians 3.20. Okay, so I want to get back just a moment to the earlier verse that I read in Hebrews chapter 12, the, the latter part of verse 1. Let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. Now, I used to do a little bit of running when I was younger. I didn't really like running a lot because to me it seemed boring. You just, it's the same thing the whole time, right? Uh, Cross country would seem a little nicer because at least you were kind of going through some scenery and you know, it was kind of fun to jump over puddles and the tr you know, whatever. But, but I had a certain process that I followed when I ran because you know, I, I, I didn't, I moved around a lot when I was a kid, so I never was like really connected to the dynamic of whatever school I was in, know the people, that kind of thing. I actually know a lot of people in my high school group now more better than I did when I was there, seeing them all the time. But so I had this dynamic. I would, I would get into the race and I, there would be somebody, of course, that would take off in front, the rabbit or whatever they would call them, right? And I would just kind of look at them and I would just keep them close. Right? I wouldn't be ahead of them. I might not be right behind them. But, you know, say like Ben is, you know, the, the rabbit. He's facing the wrong way, of course. But he, the rabbit, and so he'd be running. And I would just be like right here. I just keep my eye on him, right? And I just keep pushing. Yes, you know, when you're running, of course, your body's going, stop anytime soon kind of thing, right? But I would just push through that pain. And as we got close to come around that last bend, and there's the finish line up there, I had the ability to kick it into high gear, almost like do a full out 100 yard sprint. I don't know how I did that because you know, I'm hurting by at that point, but I would just ignore it and go. Like, it's kind of like I knew the finish line was there. If I could just get there quicker, it, all the pain would be over kind of thing, right? So I would push through, okay? I would run the race with endurance despite the pain. And you see, as we talk about being game changers, we need to be aware of three things I want to talk about. Here's my three points. You guys getting ready? They're not, I'm not saying them exactly the same way right now, but I'm going to call them something else. But we are called by God, number one. Number two, to run. In other words, keep moving forward. Three, in a race to change the world. And again, as we read in our book, it's just one small thing at a time. I, I'm often remembering the story. There's a, a famous evangelist. I can't remember if it was Moody or Billy Sunday, one or the other, probably um, B.L. Moody. He was a kid in a, in a Sunday school class. He worked at a shoe store, and his Sunday school teacher came to him one day at his shoe store and talked to him about the Lord, led him to the Lord, right? And eventually he grew up and became a dynamic minister that literally led millions to the Lord, the, the, the kid in the, that was working in the shoe store. And I might have my story messed up. I've read so many things, sometimes I forget what's what. But my point is you never know what your impact will ultimately do. You might not be the voice that says, does those kinds of things, but you might be the trigger that leads somebody else to do it. Right? We're called by God. So first, yes, we are called by God. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13, again, the latter, latter part of that verse through 14. 
I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. One of the, the main obstacles that we often encounter in our race is that our enemy tries to remind us of two things. One is our past failures. He's really good at that. And secondly, he tries to convince us that we don't have the ability in the here and now. And yet, our God, our Father, is constantly reminding us that our past, whatever it might have been, it could be, it could be horrible for all I know, but even though he knows it all, no matter how gruesome it is, it has been forgiven. The slate is wiped clean. 1 John 2, 12. And also, we are now able to be successful in what we are called to do because our life is a testimony to God's transforming power. Hello? Revelations 12, 11. Your purpose, your task is not just to... To, to read off some points to somebody about the good news. It's about using the life that you have. God has changed me. When we did encounters, and we've only done one here, I hope to do more in the future, and we would do the classes and all that kind of stuff, but one of the, the things that I discovered, it was so beautiful. I'm like a lot of people. I might get a little nervous in, in those kind of settings. I can talk to people. If the door gets open, if I can find the opening, if it's fine, I'll go. I can talk to people like all day. But it's that, it's that first step that always tricked me up. I had a young man in my car just the other day. And even though it, it turned out well to a degree, I hate it because I actually robbed myself of what could have been more, right? A young man in my car, he, he was on the phone. He, he, got, he had something on his nose and found out he has skin cancer. Probably like 27 years old. Skin cancer. He's trying to make appointments to get surgery, get it removed, et cetera, et cetera. So he always had a problem with his back and stuff like that. And I waited, and I waited, and I waited. Finally, about five minutes before the end of his ride, because he's in my car for like 30 minutes, some minutes. I don't know what you're, what, where you're at in the Lord. If you know God, believe in God, but I do, and I would really love it if I could pray with you. Oh yes, please. And I prayed for him, and he was basically in the back seat crying. But the Spirit of God touched him. But then the ride was over. So the opportunity to go further than that. But does he need to go further than that? Yeah, absolutely. If he doesn't know God, he needs to go further than that. That moment would be great, but he's, he's got some more struggles coming up. And he needs to have God who can walk with him, right? And so what I'm saying is, God, the, the enemy will try to rob us of things, but we've got to just press on and not worry about anything else. Because, again, that's what our struggle is to be faithful when he's called us to do. That's our purpose. We're not here for anything else. There's a lot of things that are part of that. Do we, do we need to be good husbands, good wives? Yes. Do we need to be good parents? Yes. Good employees, good employers? Yes. Be, be um, help at the church? Yes. All those kinds of things. But our main purpose is to share the good news with other people. It really is. It's the main thing. So I was reading something just the other day, and this blew my mind. This is a, a famous preacher from way back in the day. And he basically said, if you don't have a passion to win souls, I don't know if you're saved. pretty heavy, isn't it? Because sometimes we just want to kind of get into our box and just maintain what we've got and kind of pursue our little hobbies and, the, and we forget that the ultimate purpose is that. Again, I'm not saying you have to do that 24-7 necessarily, but it should be something that you're praying about, preparing for. Huh? So you can do these things. Believe me, you can do the things God called you. You've got to focus, not be distracted. Right? God's purpose for your life. We often, we often find it easier to make excuses and to give ourselves reason instead of doing those things. We come, we, we, it comes in the form of former failures to somehow then be, create a template for our perceived future failures. And yet, in everything we come against, we are not only conquerors, but we're more than conquerors through the Heavenly Father. Victory is ours. Amen? Amen. And that's the truth. I'm not sharing anything that's not true to you today. God has called you to be more than conquerors. What, what, what if somebody rejects me? I don't care if, listen, I'm saying this by faith because I know, again, I have the same struggle. I don't care if they reject me. What I'm more concerned about is whether they accept him. Huh? B, we are.
are in a race that we are destined to win. I've already kind of been touching on that a little bit. Isaiah chapter 40, starting in verse 29. God, he gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weak and tired. Uh, and young men will fall in exhaustion. Those days are way past me, of course. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. You know, as I'm sharing this, I'm reminded of a truth that I discovered so long ago, and yet I seem to forget about it all the time, is when I got saved, I didn't know squat about what was happening. I just knew I needed something. I, I, I felt like God was the answer. The invitation was given. I almost got saved years before I got saved. Did you know that? I remember going to this Nazarene thing that they held at the high school. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking now, man, why, why didn't that happen? I wonder what happened there that I missed it. But a couple years later, boom, it happened. But I didn't know what was going on. In fact, I didn't even know I was saved until somebody explained it to me a couple of weeks after I made the prayer. But in those opportunities that I've had to talk to somebody and help them find Jesus, right? And I talk to them and I pray with them and they give their heart to God. Can I tell you something? I know what's going on. I know what's happened now. I didn't know what then, but I certainly know what's happening now. And I'm telling you what, even though getting saved was so exciting and so great, such a blessing in my life, if, if the rush, uh, this is a bad way to term it, but the rush and the, and the feeling and the blessing that you feel when you take that to step in and help somebody else discover that for themselves, nothing compares. Nothing compares. That's why they can soar high on eagles. That's where they find new strength. When you have that one moment where you lead somebody to God, you talk to them and they pray through, come and tell you something, that's going to give you strength that you wouldn't even imagine. It's going to pump you up. Huh? Wouldn't it be nice to be declared the winner before even playing the game? Shiloh's over here 10 minutes before church harassing me, <laughs> bothering me about his fantasy football. Good job, Shiloh. Wouldn't it be nice if he could just relax I already know I've won. It's already, well, the game's been made, but I already know I've won. Now, he, of course, in our sphere, it would just be arrogance to think that, but what if he knew already, right? He had gone in a time machine a couple of days ahead. He's seen the score. Oh, I won. He comes back. You know, he's just I know I won. Well, there you go. Okay? To step onto the field with the overwhelming confidence that the victory is already guaranteed, and yet... This is, in fact, the promise our Father has given us. A hope that exceeds our wildest expectations. 1 Timothy 4.10. Huh? He's given us a hope that goes beyond what we think. But we have to run the race. We've got to know. When I, when I taught junior high and high school, I had the privilege of having some of my grandkids in my class. One of the things I did with my classes, three times a year, I took them out to this park. They had a, like an oval track. It was actually slightly less than a quarter mile. I had to measure it and then stagger where they start so that it was an actual mile. Because they would time them, time the mile. They did the mile, the long jump. They would throw things, jump, jump, or whatever. And I had a log book, like record book. You know, it was kind of cool, whatever. So one, one year, our granddaughter, Jewel, and it's crazy now because when she was in the last year of high school, and even I was thinking about when she went to college, she's kind of doing it online, but she's, she's a runner now. I wouldn't have believed it, you know, because I know what she was like before. So this one time she's running, and, and it was like a time, I think it was like 10 minutes and 30 seconds they had to run it in, a mile. That's really not that fast. As an old guy myself, I could probably do about an eight and a half minute mile myself. I might fall over whatever afterwards, but, you know, because one time I tested and said, you guys, what's the problem? So I went out and ran in front of them. They all watched, and I ran a mile, and I did like eight and a half. Said, so if I can do it, because I'm always using that old man stuff, right? You know you will get in the car. How's your week? Oh, I'm tired. I'm thinking, you're 15. You can't be tired yet. Wait till you get to be my age, right? But anyway, she was running the mile this one time. And of course, I'm on one spot. They're all the way over. I can see them. Come on. They walk. Get stopped. Walk. Get run. You know, I'm just, you know, doing my Pastor Gene thing. Come on. Let's go. Run. You know, especially if I know they're close. Because if they don't make it, they know this. I'm going to make them run it again. 
until they do pass. And they, eventually they all will. They always all did. But that first time, they miss it. So at break time, I would take some of they are all others are playing, but there's five or six of them running around the gym, getting time until they can knock it out, right? Anyway, she's, she's running. She's coming around the last bend. I'm over here at the finish line, right? It, she's probably from, from J to me. Now, that's not very far, is it? From J to me, it's not very far. She's got 30 seconds to get from Jay to me. You know, because she's my granddaughter still, right? Yes. My granddaughter's in there. Yes. There's just a little something extra about my granddaughter. Yes. Okay? And, uh, and she comes around and she goes, and she stops. I'm Jewel! What are you doing? And she didn't make it. She just sat there like, la, la, la. I don't care what you're saying, Grandpa. I'm tired. But you're right. And you're just a... It didn't matter. And sometimes we're like that. We're so close. I know I did a message with some other friend did. Um, quitting one foot in front of the finish line or something like that. I did that one time. Or sometimes we do that. People have a promise. People are seeing things happen. And, and, and the battle, the faithfulness gets challenged. It's hard. Being faithful is hard. It is. Some days you just don't. I don't know if Noe's tiredness was so overwhelming that he got up and went, I, got, I don't know if I want to go. I'm so tired. I asked him if he stayed up too late in the plane to give me a break. So he assured me that he, it wasn't that. Just tired. But he, you know, but he says, no, I'm going to go. I'm going to be faithful. Because sometimes it's difficult. It is. I'm not denying it. It's, it is hard. Okay. We've all seen some kind of competition, even you ladies, where one team's like way out wildly ahead of somebody, and yet there's this mad, crazy turnaround, and the other team comes back. Huh? So it doesn't matter what you're seeing right now. He's called you to victory. He's empowered you. My final point is this. Perseverance is the key. Did you miss a slide? You did. Perseverance is the key. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36, this is actually a verse that Pastor Bob shared a number of weeks back, and it just hit me like a ton of bricks when I read it. Patient endurance is what you need now. So I'm speaking to you directly at this moment. Are you listening to me? Patient endurance is what you need now. You need to patience, calm yourself down, don't get emotional, and keep pushing through. Is your body, and we're saying this in a spiritual sense, is your body screaming out at you that you're tired? Probably. But push through anyway. You just don't understand. The finish line is just ahead of you. Patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. Like I said, when I was running, you know, the first, there's usually a mile was like a four lap thing. The first lap wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad. The second lap starts coming in and things start to change. The legs start to get on fire. The chest is complaining. Right? Everything's starting to happen. The third lap is really out of control. And even in the beginning of the fourth lap, you're thinking, I don't know if I can do it. This is all the kinds of stuff you're telling yourself. Huh? But patient endurance is what you need at that moment. Bridget. That you will continue to keep going. Bridget. Because in the back of my mind, I don't know about for you, but for me, and knowing my understanding my strategy, I knew if I could just hang on. Because that guy, you know what would be happening? That guy would suddenly start kind of running a little better, and he'd start pulling away from me. I'm like, do I have enough in me to make it? I know I got that this amount, but he's 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 making it worse or something, right? Come on. It'd be really bad now, because I'm yeah. You know? And I would just fight through. I'd have to kind of start using some of my reserve before I wanted to use it. I'm like, come on, slow down. I know I got you if you just stay where you're at. But if you start making me use my jet, you know, my, what is it, the, the Knox? The, remember, I've seen some of those movies, the Knox? If you make me use my Knox too soon, it'll burn out and I won't have enough left to finish. Huh? Come on, patient endurance. Don't, don't quit. Keep pushing. Continue to do God's will. Don't quit. Don't stop. Remain faithful. See, sometimes we look at faithful and we think it's almost like boring. Oh, he's faithful. 
It means he keeps showing up. He's there, blah, blah, blah. No, nothing exciting going on, but truly mo most of the excitement is happening in that person's life because they're opening themselves up to things that God wants to bless them with. And here, this is what this verse says. Honey, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Then you will receive all that God has promised. How, why? How? By being patiently good, continuing to do God's will. Do you want to be a game changer? Yes. Oh, thank you. Huh? Sometimes it seems that God's vision for our lives is far beyond us. And guess what? It was meant to be. He has called us to run a race that requires his strength, his wisdom, his guidance. I have been asked many times, I'm getting close to the end, how do I change? You change by beginning to see things as with, first of all, as God sees them. You see sin as sin, laziness as laziness, whatever it might be. But also in pursuing with all of your might those things God has declared for you. When he shares something with you, you're going to go after it. Should I read my Bible? Of course. But are you? Should I be in God's house when his people come together? Absolutely. But do you? Are you allowing certain elements of your walk with God to become unfaithful, as it were? We allow so many distractions to chip away at our resolve. And let me tell you something. Once the enemy has discovered something in your armor that he can get through and stop you or slow you down, he will come at that spot over and over and over again. He'll just take a big old wad of arrows and then just jam them all in that tiny little spot that you've allowed to develop in you. I remember, I remember one instance. Because I did children's church for 18 years. And I hardly ever, I don't know, unless we get once, maybe once or twice a year, it was really, we would take a trip or something. I remember this one time, I don't know what it was. I, 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 I jokingly thought it was like I was having childbirth. I had some kind of stomach issue. Just like a sharp pain. And I said, no. Oh. You know where I was that Sunday morning? I was at church. I had to speak. I think I actually had to speak there and do the worship. You know, worship involved. I don't do anywhere near half the moves I do with I did the children's church. I think we had danced. You know, I was out there with them doing my stuff, man. I knew the moves. I was out there. So I'd go out there for worship. Boom, 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 boom. And I had people helping me, thankfully. And then and my, my segment would be done. And I went back. There's a classroom right off the, off the hallway there. I'd go down and lay on the floor. Just, uh, I, then I'd go out and do my message. And I would stay, and I'd go back and lay on the floor. I had to do that for two services, because we had two services. I was going to be where God wanted me to be. Amen. I was going to do what I felt God had called me to do. The true champion is the one who stumbles and gets back up again. They look at the failure and they learn from it, intending not to repeat the mistake they just made. They are the ones who have confidence in Almighty God that everything that He has spoken over them will come to pass. That's a champion. That's someone who is patiently enduring the race and is continuing to do God's will because they know that in the end, every promise that He's declared is going to be brought to pass. See, the enemy wants you to quit short of the finish line. When I was running my race, let me tell you something. There was times I thought, because when I'm doing that sprint, I'm feeling it, but at the same time, I'm like, everything's going. I'm going to finish. He wants you to give up. The enemy does. And I'm here to tell you, the promise is just there. I mean, it may seem like I'm a long way from Jay back there, but the promise, you, let me think, we don't, always, we don't always get to see it. Because it's a faith walk. It's a faith walk. If I knew the promise was right there, I'm here, and I've been fighting it, sweating it, burning up, whatever's going on, just going on. I've been, you know, doing my thing, but I'm feeling like, I don't know if I got enough, any more juice. Can I tell you something? When you come to the end of yourself, that's when you get to the beginning of God. Amen. Huh? Yeah. Yes, God, I need you. I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I'm going to. If you knew the promise was that close, if you could see it was right that close, you wouldn't quit. No. Would you? 
It's right there. There's the finish line. I don't know what I'm going to do, but it's just there. I can make it. It's not that far. I'm here to tell you, the promise is right there. Sometimes God is striving to get you to just push through all these times that you haven't. Right? You guys can go. The enemy, of course, will give you the list. If, you don't, if you've lost your particular list, he's got it available. He's got copies. You know, he's using a copy machine. Here's, here's some copies for you. Of all the times that you stopped short, right? And the promise was right there. But this time I'm going to push through. Because if I push through, I'm going to see the miraculous. If I push through, I'm going to see lives change. If I push through, I'm going to see God's promises come to pass. See, the enemy knows that the promise is right there. Did you know that? He's been a... Listen, the thing about the enemy is not so much that he's, I mean, he is better than you, forget that. Greater is he that's in you. It doesn't say greater are you than he is in the world. It says greater is he that is in you than he is in the world. Because you have God in your life, because you have Jesus on your side, that would make sure you're the enemy. But by himself, by ourselves, he would just tear us up. And he's been around, he's seen it all. He knows how many people he's been managed to stop short. He can see the promise coming. He kind of knows. You know, it's like when you know something, you see the elements of it. I think this is about to happen kind of thing. He's seen it. He's been there. He knows. You're, that guy's right there. I got to fight this. I got to drag him out, throw some weights on him, distract him, whatever else, discourage him. Because he knows. Because he knows if I make it to the finish line, I can make it to the next one. Amen. Right? I like to play basketball. I'm gonna, I'm, I am wrapping up. I don't know how long I've gone. I hope I haven't gone too long. I like to play basketball. And, and I've actually been pretty good. I sometimes think if I had just had a little bit more height on me and a little more push from, you know, from other people as I was growing up, I could have been pretty fantastic. Because I just have a drive about it, right? I've, I've played all kinds of people. I don't care how tall they are. You know, there was this one guy we were playing one time. He's tall, young guy dunking the ball during warm-up. And I said, it don't matter if you dunk in practice. you got to get past me to dunk it in the game. Yeah. Yeah. He never did. And I beat him. Right? Huh? There's just something about me. I, I, sometimes I, I played my son. My, my, my son, even Jer um, Shiloh's dad, used to play. He beat me one time. Um, and some of them, you know, they'd keep track. I beat you two times, Dad. You know? Gideon actually could beat me one out of every four games, right, because I get tired by then, <laughs> but, um, but there was something about me when, even if I was behind, it was, you know, we play like the 15, and it's like 11 to 2, I'm getting my, you know, wiped up on the, on the court or something, I wouldn't, no, you, you ain't beat me yet, you ain't beat me yet, I just up my game, I would just suddenly clamp down and push, I would push through, you haven't won until you got that last basket in, until then, it's all on. Yeah. And I'm trying to tell you, this is the picture of faithfulness. Faithfulness is, I'm doing it, right? We, we, we talk about coming to church. We talk about reading your word. We talk about spending time in prayer. We talk about being faithful in your giving. We talk about certain basic elements, the ABCs that Pastor Bob likes to talk about, right? Those things should be a given. But as long as there is a struggle, it's still a battle. You're, you haven't pushed through to the finish line. You see, for me, reading my word is not a struggle. I'm not saying that I get it every day. I'm just going to be honest. Once in a blue moon, I miss it. I, I don't know why. I just get busy and allow it to happen. But I know I've got to be in my word every day. I know I've got to be faithful in my giving. It's not even something I battle with now because I push through to the finish line. Being in church, I don't, I don't struggle with that. I hate it. I had a, I had a friend call me just the other day, you know, I'm a Seattle Mariner baseball fan, they're playing their last series in, in Seattle in the season, my friend's an Oakland A's fan, because that's who they're playing, he said, hey, let's go up to Seattle and watch the games, and spend time together, blah, 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 it's on a weekend, it's a Sunday, and immediately, I'm like, I don't know if I can do that, right, why not, Pastor Gene, don't I deserve a vacation once in a while, of course I do, I mean, Pastor Bob, it's by the way, hello, Pastor Bob. Hello, Pastor Jolene. Hope you're having a good time. <clears throat> we miss you guys. Love you guys. Um, I meant to ask you guys to do that kind of, and I 
miss these moments. The enemy knows the truth, even if you do not. He's encountered this battle many times. He knows what will happen if he runs into a believer that knows his calling and has the endurance to win the prize God has promised. He don't want that. If you push through and you claim the prize, you cross the finish line, the devil knows his job just got harder. You see, you have that, again, you have that one moment where you push through your, your nervousness, your fears, your anxiety, whatever, and you talk to somebody about the Lord that doesn't know the Lord, and they open up, and you pray with them, and they ask Jesus in their heart, can I tell you something? The next time won't be so hard. Mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I, I don't like heights, and yet I've jumped out of an airplane once. Now, while I'm not planning to do it again, I could, because I've done it once. I've done it once. Going on zip lines, really freaking me out the first time. No, I didn't think twice about it. Just went on and go. I even hung upside down, huh, babe? On that last one. Yep. Had my feet up on the rope, went like that. Because I'm going to patiently endure. I'm not going to allow fear to stop me. I'm not going to allow those things to I know that God has promised. And, and even like I said, this, I, I've received this verse as a promise. I, and I don't know if you have or not, but I pray that you will. When you're battling with being faithful in something, God's saying, what you need right now is to be patiently enduring. Continue to do my will. And here's my promise. You will receive everything I've promised you. That's the promise for faithfulness. That's the promise for faithfulness. I'm going to be here. Do, do, you, do you have the ability to take a vacation somewhere once in a while? Sure. Can I tell you, most of the time when I go on vacation, basically all the time, I, one of the reasons I don't like the fireworks thing is because I don't get to go to church. i got to figure out a way to make sure I can go to church. But we go to Hawaii, we were at church. When we took our trip around the country for 30 days, there was four Sundays. Every Sunday we were in, in a church. I'm going to do what I know God's called me to do. I'm going to be faithful to it. Because he's got a promise for me. He does. He's got a promise for you. You don't care about the promise for me. You care about the promise for me. He has a promise for you. And, and here's the thing. We, we mentioned Ephesians 3.20. His power, his mighty power is at work in you. And he's going to do beyond what you would even imagine and ask for. We've got great things in store. We, we, I joke about this. It's a great, have a great life type of thing. I want to be a game changer. I've got to make my mind up that I'm going to be faithful in those things God has already revealed for me to do without fail. And I'll watch what God will do. Can we get everybody to stand, please? If that was too long, I apologize. It's not my intention. <laughs> yes, and yet. Doesn't matter what's going on, and yet God will do. He has promised. He has called. You are God's child. You have God's anointing. His spirit is inside of you. His word is over your life. Your father is always watching over you. Every little thing. And he delights in those who remain faithful. And he will bless them beyond measure. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek what he desires. Take care of the business he's laid on your, in your hands. And you will receive everything you need not lack. Father, I just pray for your children in this house right now. I don't know who may or may not be struggling with issues of faithfulness and this or that, but God, as you reveal certain things in their life, as you call them to certain things, God, I pray that you would give them a resolve that no matter what, I'm going to push through because the enemy's going to fight God. I know he is. He's, he's not going to allow anyone to take a step closer to you. He, he knows if he does, he's losing the battle, God. So we pray right now. We call ourselves victorious over every work of the enemy. God, I pray right now everyone over here, God, would have that resolve, that desire. I'm going to make it. I'm going to push through. I may not see the finish line yet. I may not see the victory yet. But I know it's there. God has promised it. I'm pushing through. I will not quit. God, I'm going to do it. 
And this morning, I just want to make a moment before I go any further, just to pray for those, whether there's somebody online right now or there's somebody in this house. The first step, of course, to any victory is to, to line yourself up with the, the, the winner, and that's Jesus Christ. And if you've never had the opportunity, if you've never asked Jesus into your life, that's the first step. That's the first step. And it's so easy. It's a free gift God has given us. And so I just want to pray a prayer. If, if, if you are in that place where you've not asked Jesus in your life, or maybe you, you have in the past and, and you've wandered off some, for some reason, and you want to get back on track, get back in the race, just pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your son. Thank you for the sacrifice that he made on my behalf. I thank you for the sacrifice he made on my behalf. This day, this day I invite Jesus into my life. I invite Jesus into my life. I claim the price he paid I claim the price as he my paid own. As my own. I give my life to you. I give my life to you. I repent of my sins. I repent of my sins. And I turn completely to you, God. And I turn completely to you, God. Show me how to live. Show me how to live. Direct my steps. We can even, again, we take that now to another level. If you're in this house and say, Pastor Gina, I hear what you're saying. I need to be more faithful. I'm not going to ask anybody to raise their hand. That, that's, that's not the purpose today, but if that's you, just we're, I'm going to pray for you. And I just want you to say, is, is just kind of pray in agreement, or agreement, excuse me, for that. Father, I just pray in those areas where I have been unfaithful, where I've allowed myself to come up short. Where I've basically denied your word, your promise. God, I pray you break that chain off me today. Break off that, 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 that stranglehold the enemy has put in me. And help me to determine, God, that no matter the fight, the, the level of intensity, as it were, God, that I have determined, I have made up my mind. Like Paul wrote in that Philippians, I focus on the goal. On what God has called me to. And I'm going to endure. I'm going to continue to do what God's called me to do. Or I'm going to begin and, and continue to do what God's called me to do. And because of that, God, I know your promise will never fall short. And I pray that for each and every one here today. God, your promise is sure. It is more sure than anything that they can touch in this life. God, it is more sure than that. So I pray that blessing over your people right now. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen.